Now let's look at configurable products, which again are similar to customizable products. However, they differ in that when you create a product with various preset configurations, which is what a configurable product is, Magento actually generates individual simple products that are used for the different types of configuration that you allow. This is helpful for items that come pre-made in various forms, such as perhaps a mug that comes in the same style, but you can order a red version or a blue version. This allows you to keep track of each variation of the item in your inventory as well. You can also see why this wouldn't make sense for more open-ended customizations such as monogramming, where there are over 17 and a half thousand combinations of letters that a customer could specify. It obviously wouldn't make sense to have individual items on the site for every possible monogram. So to create a configurable product, we're going to click the drop down arrow next to add product and select configurable product. We're going to skip attribute set for now. You'll see why in a minute. Let's go straight to product name. We'll call this one pound coffee bean central house blend. For the skew, I like to take out the spaces and special characters. And the price for this one pound bag of our house blend is going to be $12.99. This is of course a taxable good. Let's say we have 4,000 of these. They weigh one pound each of course. All of this, we're just gonna leave it as it is. For content, once again, I'm gonna to go to blindtextgenerator.com, grab some text and just paste it in. And for the short description, I'm just going to paste the same thing, but only keep the first sentence. Now we get to the configurations section and we're gonna click create configurations. So the first thing we need to do here is create a new attribute for the option that we're trying to provide our customers. In this case, whether it's regular or decaf. So we'll click create new attribute. And of course, later on other coffee products that we want to offer, this attribute will already be created and we can just select it as opposed to creating it all over again. Labeling, whether it's decaf or whether it has caffeine can be a little awkward because caffeinated isn't technically the correct term because coffee naturally has caffeine. You don't caffeinate it. So we'll just write for our label caffeine with a question mark. And then for the catalog input type, we could use a couple of options here. The swatches are mostly for things like, again, to use the mug example, you would want a visual swatch, which would be a tiny little icon that would show the two different version colors of the mug. But we're going to just choose a drop down since this is going to be text that they're choosing from. They're going to choose text that essentially says yes, or we'll probably use decaf instead of just no. Values required? Yes. In other words, the customer does have to choose whether they're ordering regular coffee or decaf. And right here is where we're going to add our options that are going to go in this drop down box. So we'll click add option. We'll set this first one to the default. And this will just say yes. For the store view, it'll also say yes. Then we'll add a second option that says decaf. Instead of just saying no, we'll make it 100% perfectly clear and write decaf. Now we have advanced attribute properties. We're not going to actually worry about any of these. We're going to keep all of them as they are. Manage titles. We'll use the same label on the front end as on the back end. So this is the front end label caffeinated with a question mark. And finally, we have storefront properties. I'm not going to worry about putting this in search but we will make it comparable on the storefront. We will allow it to appear in layered navigation. So we'll do filterable with results so that it only shows up if there are some results that have this product with this attribute selectable. If we're using in search results, uh, that may not be as important, so we'll just leave that as no. We'll let the system choose the position for this. We're not going to worry about setting up any promotional rule conditions 
using this attribute. We don't want to allow HTML tags, I don't think, here. We do want this to be visible on the storefront. And it probably isn't important for it to show up on a listing of multiple products. So we'll leave that as no. And we're not going to worry about sorting things by this attribute either. So once we've created this caffeine attribute, we're going to save it. And now we have this new attribute that we can use. And essentially, it works just the same as any other attribute, but now we're exposing it to the front end to the customer. So we're going to select the attribute that we just created, caffeine, and click next. And now we want to select which values we want to be available to the customer. Of the two values that we've allowed for the attribute itself, which of these do we want the customer to be able to choose from? Well, obviously in this case, we want them to be able to choose either of these. So we're gonna select yes and decaf. Note that we could create a new value if we wanted to. Then click next. And here is where we get into how the site manages the multiple individual products it creates for each configurable variation of this product. So first we have images. We want to, in our case, apply a single set of images to all SKUs because the coffee isn't gonna look any different whether it has caffeine or not. 